Good evening. I am the Maven of the Eventide and welcome to Vampire Reviews. Oh, ignore that. The machine will get it. Yes, I do have one of these answering machines. I'm a very modern maven. Good evening. You have reached the maven's dark domain. Leave your unholy message at the toe. Hello, Miss Eventide. This is Jim from the HOA. Again, just another reminder that you need to take down those Halloween decorations. It is May. We're getting complaints. And also, we are in the process of towing that stupid-looking station wagon. You are turning into a hearse. It is Excuse me. <laughs> was a good year for vampires. And my good, I mean that we got a lot of them. Not that they were actually any good. Well, some of them were. Yeah, some. Not this one. Modern Vampires was a low-budget horror comedy shot quick and dirty in 1997 with some surprisingly big names to its credit. You may have caught it a couple years later on TV's sci-fi channel, but I'm betting most of you have probably never even heard of this little vampire movie. You can tell this film had high ambitions of becoming some kind of camp cult classic. Its director, Richard Elfman, achieved such a thing with his first film, Forbidden Zone, which is a surreal musical production of his experimental commedia dell'arte troupe, The Mystic Knights of Oingo Boingo. Yes, Richard is Danny Elfman's brother, and Danny Elfman did the theme music for Modern Vampires. It's pretty much the best thing about this whole vampiric cheese ball of a movie. Yeah, this movie was a flop on arrival. Though it has plenty of splashy blood and gore and sex and monster makeup, it doesn't have any real scares or suspense to make it effective as a horror film. And the humor isn't sincere enough to make it memorable as a comedy. It neither adequately respects nor spoofs vampire tropes, so the whole thing just kind of crumbles apart into a sloppy, awkward mess of a film that most critics agree is only something puerile teenagers might like for its juvenile humor, abundant nudity, and frequent, completely random girl-on-girl -girl action. But it does have vampires. So many vampires in vampires always means something, which is what we're all about here on Vampire Reviews. So let's pick apart the cheese ball and examine those chewy nuggets of vampire social satire. If you've heard of this movie at all, you may have known it under its working title, Revenant. This was never supposed to be the movie's final title, but someone missed that memo and distributors started pre-sales internationally under that name, so they had to release it in foreign markets as Revenant, but then they used its real title, Modern Vampires, in the US. They never wanted to use Revenant for the final movie title because they were afraid that no one would know what the word meant. But don't worry, they got you. The first thing you see in the movie is a dictionary definition of the word. Yeah, it just means undead. They were trying to be deep here because besides just returning literally from the dead, Revenant can be used as a metaphor for someone who returns from a long absence. Get it? Like the film's vampire protagonist Dallas does. But that's just a thing he does. That's it. Nothing deeper. And, and then this word Revenant is never actually used in the movie. Not that they actually call themselves modern vampires out loud in the film either, but it goes without saying. They are so thoroughly modern. These people can take over the entire world, for God's sake. We are in danger. They are vampires, you hear me? They control the international press. They control the international banking. They drink blood. Now that's a resume. Count Dracula, yes, the Count Dracula, runs LA like a hip, sexy mob boss out of his exclusive nightclub with local politicians under his thumb. I would like to propose a toast to Governor-elect Davis. The ever-hungry Governor-elect and our two senators from California. The politicians are ever-hungry. Just like the vampire. 
Dracula's got a squad of goons to enforce his rule, and the other local vampires all bow to him. No new vampires are allowed to be made without his explicit approval. And Dracula, you see, is very particular about who is worthy to become a vampire, carefully relegating emigration to the undead world. And this is a bit ironic, as he himself is in the position of being an immigrant to America. All his approved vampires are these snooty Europeans who are now living it up in Hollywood, clubbing, and running art galleries. They even have a professional service to get rid of their victims' bodies. So modern! Only the classiest, hippest, whitest Europeans allowed. Our token American vampire is the film's protagonist, who is named Dallas, in case you couldn't tell he was American. How about those Dodgers, Harold? We find out Dracula turned Dallas during World War II when his Air Force plane went down in Europe, so that he could use his American citizenship to get all his Euro trash vampire friends green cards to move to California to escape the war. But now, in modern times, Dallas is banished from hip and glamorous LA. Because, you see, a long time ago, he got it into his head that he could kill Dracula's famous nemesis, the vampire hunter Van Helsing. But he failed, and just made Van Helsing's vendetta so much worse. So, Dracula exiled him. But Dallas is a renegade, see? And he's come back to LA anyway, like the revenant he is. He's the down-to-earth American among the European snobs, but still so modern he brushes his fangs, and he likes rap music. This is our other American vampire, Nico. She's loudmouthed, impulsive white trash with no sense of manners or style. So American, down to earth, and gritty. So gritty, she literally lives in the dump. So of course Dracula hates her. She doesn't match his aesthetic. Also, she's been working the streets to catch victims, leaving bodies for the police to find, earning a reputation as the Hollywood slasher, which pisses Dracula off. They have a cleaning service for that now? If anyone's afraid you're gonna get arrested, you know what'll happen then? The whole world will know vampires exist, and the human race will hunt us down like rats. So to us, you're dangerous. Dracula orders her execution, but Dallas, a fellow salt-of-the-earth American, has a soft spot for Nico, and he wants to rescue her instead. Turns out, he's actually the one who turned her into a vampire years ago, and then immediately abandoned her, for some reason. He did it without the Count's permission, and nothing he tries will convince Dracula to spare Nico. She's just too trashy and so proud to be a u.s citizen and hate on immigrants it's the american way oh i should leave the country well i got news for you i'm an american citizen and no fucking foreign bag of shit's gonna run me out of my own goddamn country the movie was clearly going for something prescient here with this culture class war between the europeans and the americans going somewhere it just never actually gets there your friends are all a bunch of snobs. You know, that motherfucking wetbacks with their big ass words running around telling American citizens what to do. As much as Dracula disdains Americans in general with his European elitism, he's also literally explicitly racist against black people. Yeah, you're in a world of shit now. Nobody, nobody gets turned into a vampire without the Count's permission. Who are you permission from no damn Count? And when he finds out there's a whole bunch of black blood suckers running around, he's gonna throw everything at you. What, this Count motherfucker got something against black folk? That's putting it mildly. He's gonna have y'all burned. We should have killed all of you black bastards when we had a chance. Both sides of the vampire war are shown as bad. The Europeans are preening white supremacists and cruelly sadistic, hedonistic killers, torturing and humiliating their victims in their degenerate sex dungeons. Meanwhile, American Nico is an uncontrollable force of chaos and unbridled rage, little more than a rabid animal most of the time, reckless and uncouth. <laughs> also shows us something of the humanity and sympathy in both sides as well. 
Nico's emotional vulnerability and youthful naivete, and the love and sense of family between the Europeans, even as their deaths are played for comedy. Still the prettiest girl at the dance, dear. That's some real love for your ass. Real love? These people drink human blood to stay alive! And then, this little heartbreaking romantic moment between dying monsters is emphasized by the film immediately cutting the scene back to a gang of crips gleefully gang-raping a vampire in a display of human monstrousness. Yes, the humans here are monsters too. There is no black and white morality in the undead underbelly of LA. We also get to see Dallas take Nico on a soulful journey back to the parents she lost when she became a vampire 20 years ago, and we find out that her stepfather sexually abused her while her mother enabled his abuse. More human monsters. Not even Van Helsing is portrayed as a good guy because in this movie he isn't just a vampire killer, he is also a literal Nazi. Is literal Nazi a space on vampire bingo yet? Even decades after he was exonerated at Nuremberg for his war crimes, he is so consumed by his fashy racial aggression against vampires that he sees no humanity in them at all. Even when his own son was turned into a vampire by Dallas to save his life from a fatal disease, Van Helsing staked his son rather than allow himself to accept vampires as people. Murderous people, but still people. Van Helsing claims he is on a holy mission from God, using his religion to justify unpersoning vampires for his intolerance and hate crimes, wreaking plenty of murderous slaughter of his own, and even having once conducted cruel Nazi experiments on the particularly young and vulnerable ones of them. You are a monster! Not me! I do the snake slowly! Slowly into your black heart! You're the monster, not me. It's okay, it's okay. You're both monsters, Dracula and the Nazi war criminal. Contrasted to Van Helsing are the men he hires to help him in his vampire slaying efforts. Because it's not just the vampires who are modern. Van Helsing is hip with the times too. So, his army of vampire slayers is recruited from one of LA's criminal street gangs, the Crips. So modern, so 90s. And these men are shown to be just as amoral as the vampires well before they become vampires themselves. I don't understand this. You're telling me you don't believe in vampires, yet you're willing to drive a stake to someone's heart? Yeah, I need this job. That bad? Yeah. I'm talking about people who live off human blood. I'm talking about people who destroy things. I'm talking about bad, bad people. You're talking about us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason the Crips end up becoming vampires at all is because they gang rape one they've tied up to a bed with garlic before they help slaughter her. Yes, besides being a class war metaphor, vampirism is also an STD metaphor for like two scenes in this movie. Uh, I think maybe a condom's in order here, huh? Oh, wow. It was the 90s. STDs were the hot topic. So modern. Hey, man. We the first black vampires. <laughs> Yo, just call me black. <laughs> I figured Van Helsing's attitude towards our kind would change, you know, seeing how his kid was a vampire and all. Wait a minute. You mean Van Helsing offed his own kid? mistake right through his heart like it was nothing. Man, he is one sick fuck. Says the one who ravages a sales girl in the middle of a public shopping mall just because she insulted your eyeshadow? No side is the good one here. Nobody is in the right. Neither the Europeans nor the Americans, the white people or the black people, the humans or the vampires. They're all awful people doing awful things. All society is terrible. Yeah? It is only the individual who is sometimes good. We see this in Dallas, the vampire with the heart of gold. 
Despite him participating happily in his European friend's lifestyle on his visit to LA, we see that it's not generally his vibe. And when it comes to Nico, he would give up everything to save the girl he loves. You mean to tell me that you are willing to sacrifice <gasps> your life for this thing? Don't do it, Dallas! I guess it was the case of love at first sight. You're a real sap, Dallas, you know that? No wonder everyone hates you. Society has no place for a nice guy, no room for softness and sensitivity, and Dallas is not allowed to be that romantic sap. At the end of the day, he's still a vampire. He still victimizes people to survive in the world. As an individual, he can only be good in his own estimation. To Dallas, this is love. And in the end, his love tames the feral Nico too, along with her random new lesbian love interest she met in a restaurant bathroom. And the three of them make out wantonly as they leave the materialistic superficial land of LA to go to New York, a gritty land where real Americans live. The final punch of the film is the reveal that after the American vampires kill all the European vampires, including Dracula, reclaiming their country for their own from the snobby, oppressive, corrupt immigrants. They solve their Van Helsing problem by turning him into a vampire too. And yet, instead of it finally being the kick he needs to let go of his racial intolerance and see vampires as people, realize he is just as much of a monster as they are, and always has been, he is now his own worst nightmare, begging only for the sweet release of death. Because, you know, racism and classism can't be cured with simple fixes. It's a societal problem, and the individual really has no power. And even the best individuals, like our heroes here, are still monsters, despite being sympathetic ones. There is no true goodness. It's all just varying degrees of vampiric evil. Ah, uh, late 90s nihilism. So modern. But yeah, we live in a society, what can we do? Laugh, because it's a black comedy. Well, I would, if the movie were actually funny. I am the maven of the eventide, and even the cheeseballiest movies can say something with their vampires, or at least try to. Now I just really want some cheese. Thank you to my Patreon patrons for supporting this channel and all of my vampire shenanigans. This review was actually a sponsored request from one of my fabulous patrons. I had actually never even heard of this movie before the person requested it, and I love discovering the obscure vampires that sometimes slip between the cracks. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go take care of my Halloween decorations by putting up more!